If you've watched any of my videos lately, it won't be lost on you that I've started to use a clickbait style title and thumbnail strategy. And of course, when you do this, it's going to bring out some haters, but this video is not for the haters. This is for <clears throat> whatever the opposite of a hater would be. The lovers, I don't know what term there would be, but it is for the people that like and watch my videos and have commented like what's with these titles and thumbnails. Maybe they think they're hilarious or they're mildly annoyed, but I also I always like it when a creator makes a change on their channel, but then gives some transparency on what they've done and why they're doing it. And even if I don't end up liking it, or I think it's not a good thing, having some knowledge of the why, I think kind of makes a difference in the way that I feel about what they're doing. So that's what this video is about. But to understand this new title and thumbnail format that I'm using at times, I really have to establish what's the, what is this channel all about? Well, this channel is primarily made for people that have a budget anywhere from a used camera and a $50 cheap Chinese lens up to a mid-tier price camera, high-end APS-C camera, or entry-level full-frame camera. And in experience, it goes from anybody who's just a rank beginner, has never used a camera before, up to an intermediate level, somebody who's now taking photos and videos that you know, their friends think they're the best photo or video shooter in their little group of friends. And they're to that point where maybe they could be even looking at doing professional work in the futures, headshots, weddings on weekends, or real estate photography, something like that. And when I started this channel, I had this little saying, which was the idea of my videos were to help you get the best results in photo and video with the gear that you can afford or the gear that you already have. And I think although the channel at times has lost its way, it is now leaning into that more than ever. And I think that philosophy underpins all the videos that I make. In addition to that, I have this little adage, kind of like a do no harm thing where I want my videos to go out there and I don't want them to be I'm winning and other people are losing or it's at anyone's expense. I hope that the videos I make make everything or the world a little bit better place. I mean, they're not gonna save anybody's life or anything like that, but I don't wanna put out a video that the net result is that, you know, the world is a worse place for that video being out. So that kind of underpins everything I do. And that's the way I look at all my videos before I come up with a video idea or publish it. That's kind of where it all starts. And I made videos like this for years and no one saw them. And the consistent comment I got on those videos was more people should see these videos. I can't believe you're not to 100,000 subscribers yet, or you know this video is too good for the 50 views that it's got or whatever. And the channel really just didn't grow. And, and I, I, hired, uh, I hired a YouTube coach, I did YouTube courses, I joined all these groups. And eventually what I worked out was, if you are getting those comments on your videos, it means that your videos are good enough, but your channel strategy and title and thumbnails are not good enough. So people, you have a, you have a quality product or quality content that adds value, but nobody's finding it because you don't know how to succeed on YouTube and be found. And that has led me down this crazy path of experimenting with different things, different things, and eventually realizing that but my title and thumbnail strategy was very similar to other creators, photographers, video shooters in the space. And many of them succeeded because they've been making videos for years. And, and those strategies, they're still using those strategies, but they have a core audience following them. My channel was not going to grow without changing strategy. In addition to that, my audience is new users and the titles and thumbnails that I was using was not finding those people. YouTube did not know how to take these videos and put it in front of those people. And I'll just give you kind of a real world example of a recent title and thumbnail I did, which would I would consider it the most clickbaity title and thumbnail I have ever done. And that was covering this Viltrox 27 millimeter F1.2 APS-C lens. And the thumbnail says beats full frame. And the title is uh, APS-C special. This lens makes full frame irrelevant. That is a pretty hardcore clickbaity style of title and thumbnail. And just to confirm what clickbait is, clickbait is generally considered 
a title and thumbnail that is either sensationalized or misleading in order to get clicks. And if we look across the platform as a whole, most of the most successful videos on YouTube use this strategy. We're so used to seeing it that we often don't think of it or we still call clickbait you know, a, a bad thing. But I'll just throw a, a, a thing up on screen now. This is a, a Mr. Beast video with like 77 million views. He's surrounded by dynamite. You look at that, that is either sensationalized or misleading, but we all know that Mr. Beast is not going to be surrounded by dynamite. So we kind of accept that this is the standard and he has to do something so extreme to get people to click because that's just the format. That's the way YouTube works. So let me give you a real world example. This is this lens I recently did this video on. And previously my title would have probably been something like uh, Viltrox 27 millimeter F1.2 review dash, best lens for APS-C sensor cameras or something like that, right? Very similar to a ton of other people that would talk about this lens, review this lens. When we look at my core audience, which, which is often new or inexperienced users, you can pick apart this thumbnail or this title and see why it totally wouldn't work. To start with, the, the first word in that title would be Viltrox. A lot of the people that I'm trying to reach don't even know what Viltrox is. They don't know the brand. And one of the biggest things I do on this channel is find these third-party manufacturers, most of them out of China, and try to uh, introduce the highest quality products they make to people who've never heard of them so that they can get a great budget alternative to buying a first-party uh, Sony, Canon, Nikon, even a Sigma or Tamron lens. By putting a name in there that most of these people don't know, it's either going to be a point of confusion or it's just going to be a point of, uh, you know, almost a turnoff because they don't even, what is that? Bill trucks. Then I've got 27 millimeter F1.2 in the title. A lot of the people I'm trying to reach don't even know what that means, 27 millimeter F1.2. Or if they do, they have a preconceived notion that maybe the best lenses for them are zoom lenses, or maybe their friend told them that you really only need a 35 millimeter lens and you know nothing else matters. So we've got more numbers in there that aren't leading them to click. They're just additional points of confusion. And then we've got, you know, best, you know, APS-C lens, you know, whatever. Same thing everybody else. There's there's nothing compelling about that title for the group of people that I'm trying to reach. And the only people that are going to find that video are people that are searching for the lens already, and that's not who I'm trying to reach because those people already have the knowledge. I'm trying to put a lens in front of someone who doesn't know it exists and and recommend it as a budget alternative to more expensive options. So now let's look at my current title and thumbnail strategy and how I ended up with this, probably the most clickbaity title and thumbnail that I've ever used. To start with, I take the lens out and I use it. And I probably used this lens for the better part of a couple weeks. And the overwhelming thing that I noticed when using this lens is because it is an F1.2 lens, that opening in the back of the lens is larger. It's gonna give you better low light performance and it's gonna give you a more blurry background. And because of that, <clears throat> the shots that I got out of this lens looked a lot like the ones I'm getting out of my full frame cameras. And it really made me think, wow, this is getting a lot of that full frame look that people are looking for in an APS-C lens. And in fact, there might be a good group of shooters out there that are shooting on an APS-C sensor camera that want that look. And they could buy this lens, and it won't change their camera, it won't change the other lenses they've got. But if you throw this lens on your camera, it's gonna give you a very similar look to what you're getting out of a full frame, at least as far as your ability to blur a background and get better low light performance, which are two key things that people look for in a full frame camera. So now I'm thinking this lens is for somebody who is shooting an APS-C sensor camera, they're thinking about upgrading to full frame, but that is going to be a huge investment. And they're probably pretty happy with what they've got, and they're not even necessarily sure if the full frame is going to make a big difference. So for those people, I think potentially they could buy this lens and it would satisfy that little itch of the full frame image quality in one lens and save them the money of replacing their whole system. And in addition to that, their APS-C sensor camera is probably smaller, the lenses are smaller, so if they wanna keep that small portable form factor, they use the APS-C lenses that they've got. If they wanna get that full frame look, they throw this lens on. So they might get a little bit of the best, best of both worlds. 
So that's who this video was going to be for. And that formed the way I decided to make this title and thumbnail. So now we look at through that, that person's eyes. The title or the thumbnail comes up on screen and you always think of the thumbnail first and then the title. They, they look at the thumbnail first and then they read the title if the thumbnail is compelling enough. So that user who is in this mindset on APS-C, not sure if they should upgrade, sees this lens sitting on the table, says beats full frame. They're thinking, I'm thinking about upgrading to full frame. This beats full frame. What's better than full frame? So then they go and the title says APS-C special. Okay, I've got an APS-C sensor camera. This is about me. This must be maybe an APS-C lens. And then it says, this lens makes full frame irrelevant. Well, I've been thinking about upgrading. This is gonna make full frame irrelevant. And then they click on the video. And now I'm just gonna play the very start of the video because this ties into the whole thing. And you'll, you'll see how, although the title and thumbnail were absolutely sensationalized and misleading, you can see that in the first few seconds, I explained the point of the whole thing. So here's the first few seconds of the video. I think this lens represents one of the most important new releases on the Sony E-mount. And that's because for a lot of users out there, this lens will eliminate the need to upgrade to full frame. So that's how the title and the thumbnail all tied in to both my intent in the beginning of the video and the rest of the video. You know, I start the video talking about what the lens is good for, and then I go into a more traditional lens review, which is typical with the formats of my videos. And this video boomed right out of the gate, and I think captured a whole bunch of those people that were thinking exactly the way that I thought they were thinking and really hit the right demographic. But anytime you do something as aggressive as this and you, you have a really compelling title and thumbnail and YouTube's going, wow, there's getting a lot of clicks on this. They will pump it up and it's gonna find people who it, the video wasn't intended for. And obviously you're gonna get some people that are angry about that and you're going to get some dislikes in the video. It still is a heavily liked video, like well over 90% ratio on likes. So it's primarily finding the right people. But if you have a video that really does get reach, it is going to catch some people that the video is not intended for, and you kind of just accept that. But I wanted to use this as an example because this is definitely the strongest clickbait style video that I've ever used. Now, I wanna talk about the bigger picture on YouTube as well, because I think uh, you know a lot of people are going, well, other people in the photography niche are, are not doing this. And the way that I look at it is I'm not, my videos aren't competing against other people in, in the photography niche. And in fact, if you look on your own homepage, you're gonna get a few from, you're gonna have all your hobbies there, all the things you're interested in. For me, it'll be like one about coaching basketball, it'll be some photography stuff, it might be training the dog, it might be Formula One, there'll be all different things in there. And they're all competing against each other. And in the photography niche, we're not great at actually competing against the rest of the platform. And that's that's actually created a thing that kind of hurts the niche as a whole because if somebody watches a photography video, the next time you refresh your homepage, you're gonna have more and more photography videos on there. So the more that every creator is a little bit more aggressive with their uh, title and thumbnail strategy, and if every creator gets a little bit more views, there's this snowball effect where everyone gets more views. So for me, I had to think about how do my title and thumbnails compare to the other title and thumbnails um, on the platform. And if you look at some of the titles and thumbnails that I've got coming up on screen now, as you can see, that th th this is just kind of the way YouTube works nowadays. Now, what I will say is that doesn't mean that you'll like it. It doesn't mean that you even think what I do is justified or okay. But for the people that watch this channel and love the videos and have seen this change and have questioned it, I just wanted to give you some transparency on why I do it and how we got here. Now, I'm continuing to try to improve my strategies on YouTube, and one of the biggest problems with this format that I'm using is if at a later date you wanna go back and find that video about the 27 millimeter Viltrox lens and you search for it, you can't find it. And it's this crazy thing where I've seen people talking in the comments where they go, well, you can't find it when you search, but there must be some benefit to it because he's doing it on all of these new videos. And that's right. Most of my new lens release videos are the top videos for those lenses on YouTube, but they can't even be found in search. It's just the way the whole thing works. 
but I am trying to work out a way that I can make those either discoverable in search or somehow give you a list as a, as a reference if you're thinking about a lens, a place that you can go and look and see that if, if I have reviewed that lens, you can see my take on it because I do see that as a pretty big downside with this current strategy that I'm using. All right, well, that's it. That's my off-the-cuff kind of here it is, transparent video. I, I don't know. Hope it gives you a little bit of insight into the behind the scenes on YouTube. All right. Thanks for watching.